me please all welcome Tyler the Creator. What's up Tyler? <laughs> Mr. Tyler the Creator, it's such a pleasure to be sitting next to you right now. Thank you for being here. From an Australian herself, I'm a born and raised Aussie girl, Tyler. I'd like to warmly welcome you to Australia. Thank you. <laughs> you haven't visited here for quite some time. May I ask how it's been to be in Australia in 2022? I was here 2020, right before the pandemic. Um, it was fun, it was nice. I'm here now and it's been great. We was in Perth for like five days. I love it there. Don't know how y'all feel about it. <laughs> Don't give a f that place is awesome. <laughs> Perth is ill because, like, like, Sydney feels like a city. Mm. But Perth is, like, it's city, but, like, it's super chill. You feel like you in a cut, and we was walking around, went to an arcade. Like, I felt just super civilian-like out there, and it was great. But um, Lunar Park, hey. <laughs> bro, we went yesterday. Y'all have a treasure there. That is a f treasure, that place. The slides? <laughs> are you crazy? We got on the... Uh, yeah. And we have that back home. Like, that's at every carnival back home. But that one was different. We got... I got f***ed up. Like, I realized, <laughs> oh, I'm 31 after I got off of it. Like, kids are in pain. Jasper's <laughs> neck. But, like, it was great. It was that's great. amazing. And I, I did tell you earlier that we have one in Melbourne, too, so... You should check it out. No, I'm going to I'm I'm definitely do that. <laughs> well, um, you've, been, you've been with the Converse All-Star community for a, a while now. Mm -hmm. I believe since 2018. Um, you've welcomed us to your Fairfax store. You've also welcomed us to your Camp Flow Festival. Sorry, uh, 2017. I had to correct you. Oh, my bad. Thank you it's for correcting okay. me. <laughs> I'm glad it's okay. Um, um, you've also joined the LA series, the Paris series, and now you're here in Sydney for the Sydney series. Yeah. May I ask you what keeps you coming back to spend time with the Converse all-star community? So originally this wasn't like a thing. And I don't know, I don't mind talking. And, just like, <laughs> and it's, I don't know, it's kind of fun. And well, at, at least at every one we've done so far, um, this is the fourth one. It is the fourth one. We did London, we did LA, we did Paris, and now this one. It's always fun, like, someone getting to ask a question, and it's some dumb shit. <laughs> and I mean that in the sense of, like, people already know their answers. They just be wanting someone to just repeat it back. Some people do just want cheerleaders and someone to just kind of repeat the thing that they know in their head. So, I don't know. I don't mind being that for some people here and there. As dumb as it may seem, some people really be needing that shit. So, I think it's cool. Facts. Facts. Well, you're sitting in a room with all-stars from all around the world. So, we are in Sydney, but we have all-stars here who are from Cape Town. I don't mind a shout out when I, when I mention your, your town. Fire. Manila, we've got Bangkok, London, Fire. Auckland, China. And oh, y'all are really around the world. That's fire. They're really from around the world. And, you know, we all come from different backgrounds in terms of our art forms. Um, and we had the pleasure of, like, you know, merging our art forms, our cultures, our perspectives over the past four or five days, um, or since Wednesday. And we've created a show showcase together. We've busted our asses off. And it's really paid off. We've just spent some time looking at our artwork. Um, yeah, so that's, that's us. I'm going to now ask you a question that I actually really want to know the answer to. <laughs> Thank God. I love that. Okay, awesome. This one's about scaling up as a creative. Um, pretty much scaling up has been a really common thought for myself and I understand for a lot of people in this room. And it's pretty much that whole thing of, obviously, we start off by ourselves, put in the work, we get recognised or we get opportunities and then our plates start to load up and we get to a point where we feel a bit overwhelmed but also ready to take the next step. My question is, at what point did you need to engage more help in your career so that you could keep up with everything that you had created for yourself? Um, I guess I'm talking about your professional growth, like what type of help did you engage and how did you go about it? And I'm thinking like managers and assistants and it 
it's it's kind of one of those things where like for us sometimes it's a, a financial situation that can hold us back but um yeah scaling up you obviously once upon a time we were a one man show and then how did how did you yeah no you 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 need help um in some form or way no matter what uh it's just being aware of your position and where you want to go and just knowing exactly what that help is you need. Like some people think they need, oh, right now I need a manager and this person and someone to do social media and marketing and the guy to eat the rug when I need the rug eaten. And it's like, <laughs> where do you want to go? If you want to go to, a terrible example, but if you're in a car and you're trying to get to Texas, then okay, you need gas, you need a car extra money for food and a hotel. You don't need a rug eater or <laughs> the other extra shit. So as you just keep progressing and you have a pinpoint bullseye on where you wanna go, you have to just pick accordingly from that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Okay, and then, so would you say that if we don't have the financial backing to, to be able to like say, hey, I need your help, then we're probably not in a position to be scaling up? Or do you think that there's other ways around it if you well, don't necessarily it's, have that? It's, 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 it's always, I think everything's figure outable. So like, I've said that you know, even using the people around you um, that don't even know that they could be good at something, like growing up, growing up where I grew up, like you might know the guy who steals cars, who might know how to drive very well. Man, he doesn't <laughs> know that if he, takes that energy he has of doing that, that he's decent at, and like mm -hmm. put it into like go-karting, and then that gets him to NASCAR driving or whatever, like he can make a career out of that thing. So you might know someone who's terrible, terrible in school, but like knows how to talk to people and have charm. Man, that's an agent. Like the type of deals and money that they can end up getting you. So like when you do your first little show at some local club, like, man, they could get you an extra thousand dollars just because they got that. They might not know how to do the legal number stuff, but that's when you get your friend who's probably very good at selling drugs. <laughs> and because counting why? money. Because they because they <laughs> no numbers and you get right. them the hey figure this deal out, let me know that this guy isn't bullshit, because if you're selling drugs, you could sense that type of stuff off that. So like, even like that, literally using all the resources around you could sometimes like really get you there when you feel like, oh, I don't know a manager. Like, yeah, you do, but you're, you're not looking with the right lenses. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, I appreciate it. Um, well, that's all from my question. We're now going to throw to the All Stars. And they they have a have a number of questions for you. That's all you got. I mean, it was know, just more, we were but, you know, we had a tight schedule. You know what I mean? We had a moment upstairs and stuff, and I was it was it was cool. It was cool. But and I didn't want you to be all. She came up there so we could meet, and she said that she didn't want to be. Um, she didn't want to be too excited down here in front of everyone, and I'm like, why? <laughs> And you didn't even really give an answer. And I think like that's weird. Like, but you know what? I'm be, be excited, have your moment. We're not in a place where the excitement would be, like we're not in a restaurant where people are eating. And you're like, ah, like this is the place where you could have that moment. So don't be, yeah. don't suppress that. So I'll and, be honest, I'm really excited. And this is how it's expressing itself. I'm like happy to be here next to you, talking to you and, um, I guess I just wanted to break the ice a little bit. I just wanted to see you. Yeah. And you know, then when I welcome you down, I've seen you before, come through, come through, you know? Amazing, I feel it, <laughs> I feel it. I'm all for the awkward or the moments people deem awkward because it's really not, it's just life. Facts. Well, that was all for me. Like, I do have questions, but maybe another time. Because now it's your time to ask questions. That was so professional, <laughs> Up. It's, it's not school, but it's just one of those things. Mr. Noah. Um, 
<laughs> no, no, she's the best. She's the best. Shout out to Lydia, the GOAT. Best interview in Melbourne. Shout out to Melbourne. Hey, right. Melbourne. Um, what I wanted to ask was... Okay, what the f*** is your name? No, I'm sorry. My name's Noah. <laughs> Tyler, what's up? Oh, I like you, Tyler. When y'all get the mic, just say your name, just so... So, when you kind of, you know, when you yourself, um, the Odd Future crew, when you were getting to that point where you were beginning to, like, get traction, um, I want to ask, personally, what did you have to change about yourself in terms of... Like, what, what, did, what habits did you have to, like, get rid of? What kind of, I guess, personality traits did you have to bring up, suppress, to start actually um, moving more professionally, if that makes sense? Because, like, it was no longer, like, just you making music. It was now, oh, people are getting paid to do this. Now my friends are getting paid. People are, like, depending on this. What did you actually have to change uh, as a creative to kind of transition to that point successfully? Uh, my first answer, well, my first thing that came to my head when you said that was uh, repeating myself. Uh, I try to be as articulate as I can and look people in the eye and give them those details so they don't have to ask again. And when we first started getting attention and now we're doing interviews and now it's MTV and Billboard and this and that and you sit in a room and do press, uh, they all kind of ask the same questions. And, you know, 19 years old having to say, I grew up here, I like the color green. My name's Tyler for the hundredth time. Um, you have to pull yourself back and be like, okay, you're new, these people don't know you and they're interested. Chill, don't, you can't even get mad. And because I did that, it allowed me to have a level of patience that I didn't have before. So um, I don't know how much stuff I had to pull back or do that, but I did learn stuff from being annoyed and it was patience, and because of that, like, you know, you get easier with dealing with people and speaking, and, ah, uh, oh, I got this deal, and it takes a year to just finalize, like, things like that. Uh, patience with fans walking up, patience with your family, uh, having a new lens on someone they've known their whole life. So, like, that, that annoyance actually turned into something very, 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 very useful uh, in this in this limelight. Appreciate that. Appreciate if that, that answered your question, definitely, definitely. In any way, definitely. <laughs> no, thanks. Awesome. Next, you can introduce yourselves directly to Tyler. My name is Bray. What up? Tyler. How you doing, man? I'm chilling. I'm man. I'm f hyped. I'm. <laughs> hey, you got the beautiful backdrop right now. It is. I got the roller coat, dude. That an amusement park. <laughs> It's so good. We got on the slide and I was trying to get more speed so when I hit the hump, I could fly and kind of land all f***ed up. It was so good. I guess my question for you was, I love the way that you curate every space um, and in a lot of different formats and your attention to detail is so meticulous in the way that you always want things to match with brown or maybe your ideas are living on top of a hill in this pop-up store and you know, everything's, I, you're so meticulous with the way your finger space, everything in the videos. Um, my question is like, what is your philosophy for life, I guess, that you tend to follow? Um, because I feel like you have a very humanistic, um, that we receive you in a very human way. There's no like veil or this sense of like artist and then like you off stage and watching you command people on stage and you look left and without saying like, hey, left side, you know, you look left and they know. Um, and we, you know, we're, we're, everyone's so in the palm of your hand in that sense. So I guess, what is your philosophy to, to approach life and like curating everything in the way that you do? And yeah, I guess that's like not a very good question, but. Uh, I've just always been a leader, just. <laughs> I've always just been a leader and kind of, um, yeah, just been on my own and yeah, to that. But I had a thought last night. I was like, man, I can't wait to have a kid so I could give them Legos and just watch them just figure it out. I don't want to give them, like, just give them the Legos without the box 
so they don't even have, oh, I guess I should build that. Like, just let them be five years old, mm -hmm. just figuring stuff out, AKA their imagination. And a lot of people, when they get older, uh, from whether something happening or whatever, they lose that a lot, like a lot. For some people, it could be uh, religion, it could be work, it could be their parents, it could be whatever that's telling them like, no, this is how you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you get the Lego box, and on it, it's a building, and the kid is like, oh, I guess this is how you're supposed to do it. And uh, yeah, I kind of live life like I don't have a box with a building on it, but I treat everything like Legos. So I'm always like, ah, oh, that would be cool, and you just do it. I guess a better question then is like, how do you stay so connected to your inner child and that innate curiosity that drives everything that you do? Yeah. <laughs> the follow-up what, question what what just happened <clears throat> what just happened in your brain for you like you said the long-winded version then something clicked and then you shortened it and got to the what the fuck just happened within that 48 seconds um, it like went into like a million different meta thoughts and then i guess i like found the part where I like should have opened my mouth in the first place. <laughs> but it's like, it's fun to stumble no, dude, through that, you know? You get there. It took me four albums to get the Flower Boy. Like yeah, thank, I thank God fully, that. that's why I was like, oh, he perfected it. Uh, I don't know, man, just, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, uh, I feel like a lot of people don't be having hobbies and, or like that really excites them, like for real that they live for, like, if I gave you, if you gave me a billion dollars right now, untaxed, whatever, 10 out of 10 times, I would still kind of be doing the same, 100%. Riding my bike, traveling with my friends, getting excited for a oat milk chai vanilla latte. Like, do you understand what that tastes like? God, bro. I would still be dressing the same, just doing more extra out sh more ATVs. Oh, they said that we can't eat here, buy the restaurant. <laughs> Everything comes with white chocolate, like, <laughs> like that. So I feel like sometimes it depends on the per person, but I'm so in tune with that I like and love and that truly gives me joy. Like, that amusement park, like, I've been thinking about it all day. And I feel like when you, like seven-year-olds are honest. Why are they honest? Because they just know what, I don't like that. Oh my God, I love that, I'm excited that, I just didn't lose that as a kid. I know, ah, oh, chai latte. <laughs> Have you heard Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers? Ah! I posted that album more than he, I promoted Kendrick's album more than he did <laughs> at this point, you know what I mean? But that brings me joy and I just want to share it all day. That's why when you're like, oh, I don't want to be too excited down there, I'm like, no, have your moment and be excited. Like, so yeah, I don't lose that. Well, thank you for giving us permission to like what we like. And no, like you have to, with. bro. Cause like, even on, Bro, I'll be seeing these people on Twitter just always just mad or Instagram complaining or leaving comments under sh that like, I'm like, do you truly even care about that? Or like, why don't y'all just share the y'all like? Like talk about that you like, like you love, like look at this flower. Or, I love this song or I just had a meat pie. Oh my God, I'm so happy. But instead it's like, I'm disappointed in Tony for using his platform to say he hate, like, cool, but like, what made you smile earlier? Like, more of that, and that's, that's something that I'm more focused on, so. And when I'm creating stuff, that's what comes out. Regular stores, no, let's just build a blue house on a mountain. How are people gonna get there? I don't know, wait, no, let's show for them. Uh, let's get drivers. Let's use old Rolls Royces. I love that car. Cause the, and like you keep doing that and then bam. So yeah. Appreciate that, man. That's hot. Thank you. Press. Hi. 
Sorry, I've lost my voice. Yeah, it's cool. What's your name? My name's Price. What up, Tyler? I love your Gap. I Thank love you. Gap teeth so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm a lot, first of all, I used to work at Luna Park, and they literally make you go on every ride, well, what you can take, apparently. Mm -hmm. But I did not succeed. I did only four, and I was like, so it's crazy to hear that you're Bro, like- Bro, did you know the new one with fucking- Yeah, 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 yeah. And it goes like this? <laughs> crazy. Bro, I could do that five times in a row. Not me, Straight. Not me. I want to eat like a bunch of food, me and my friends, and then get on them and first and last person to throw up wins whatever prize we do. Crazy. Um, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm not participating. <laughs> I know you said you don't like repeating yourself, but there are just some people, no matter how much contact and connection you have, they will not get it. So yeah. what, do you, what have you done with that type of situation? Yeah, some people comprehension skills are very low. Um, but yeah, some, uh, you, sometimes you can't... Um, I didn't realize I was yelling in my early music until one day I was like, oh, f I keep yelling when I rap. People probably told me all the time, but it didn't click until it clicked. So at some point, you can't be like wasting your time trying to keep proving someone because maybe they're not at a place where it could go like this and then that's going to slow you down. Like, you got to just keep moving. Definitely. I like the word quantify. That was a good word to use. Well, I mean, everyone can attest to what they believe, but I think me, a little Nigerian girl growing up, like very strict, like you guys' freedom was like it. I skateboarded and f***ed up my knee the first time because I saw you and your folks. Oh. It was like... Oh, like you went shit. for it. I have the scars to prove it. So Nine like, minutes later, first YouTube video, and she was like, I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Nah, you good. You good. I will say, though, like, so I, like, my, my father's Nigerian, but I don't know that side. So, but when I meet other people who's like, I'm not, they be talking about how strict that household is. Like, F, that's the first stories they have. Like, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't do nothing. And um, luckily, all my close friends are the black sheeps of their family. All of us are the black sheeps. And I think through some micro cosmic that we can't explain yet, that's how we came together and like, that was our like, and I got to explain nothing to them. I got these, and that's a safe haven that like a lot of people don't get to have. So I got blessed and lucky to have like my close, close friends who I'm still, you know, 15, 16 years friendship with. And a lot of people don't have that like true friends. So like my, my close, close friends, we are 15, 16 years in and like, keeps me grounded and just great. So yeah, my mom was like, you going to college? I'm like, yeah, I, right. yeah, I, right. you do that. You good. Cause I know like, I knew what I had to do and I didn't care about her approval or anyone else's. I knew what I wanted to do cause I'm selfish and I put myself first and my likes and my wants and my needs first. I will drive 40 minutes out to go get a pastry because that's gonna bring me the purest happiness. And like, that's how y'all gotta start rocking it, for real. And perhaps it's that you're already, you know, sort of acting like that and you were able to connect with people because you're already walking in that sort of attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and I'm just saying that to myself, it's like, it's only until I started, you know, sort of exercising carelessness in, or stubbornness for my own good that I started to find people who also had that yeah. attitude. Yeah, I've been, <clears throat> I'm super like independent and like okay with me. Like when I, was, when I was 16, my mom had moved like away and I stayed with my grandmother and she was old. So like I didn't have no parental guidance mm. at that age. So I was kind of just roaming around. I didn't do nothing crazy, wasn't getting in trouble, but like because of that, just knowing how to be independent and like it's just me and my friends. I gotta be super secure with myself and know like, dog, I'm young and dark. I gotta make sure I don't do nothing crazy.
crazy. So because of that, just be on my sh and just be like, I'm doing everything I got to do for me because I ain't got no parents to, I got to call back and I ain't got no kids. So like, yeah, no, it's a different, it's a different thing. And you really, you really, you have a, you have a true, uh, you're just grateful for you have but it's like no like that's mine I work for that so hell yeah hi what's up my name is uh I'm from China what That's up from I like your outfit oh thank you thank yeah you. uh yeah your shoes yeah no they look they look <laughs> they look ill with the blazer when I was scanning I was like oh fire thank you thank you um I have uh two questions actually I'll well, going to, I'm a little bit nervous right now, honestly. Um, so we live in a world where the youth culture standards are mostly influenced and molded by the West. And as a person that's born and raised in, on the east side of the world, China, uh, I cannot fully resonate with some of the aspects of the current global mainstream culture. And so uh, for me, I want to be the exporter and I want to export um, what my ancestors have left me for the past 5,000 years. Sorry, it's a long question. Flip through the page. <clears throat> and because um, right now, in many countries in Asia and China, we sometimes just uh, bluntly borrowed the art forms from the West and ignoring the roots. And I love my country. I love my culture and love my people, my family. And I think the misconceptions of that many of us had that our indigenous and original cultures are um, kind of lame or just outdated, led to a predicament where only few people still care about the roots and history behind like my culture. And um, um, I, so I, I do music as well. Uh, I try to incorporate a lot of Chinese influence or like instruments into my music um, to incorporate into like rap and R&B, trying to bridge the gap between the East and the West. You're such a positive influencer on the youth culture and you're like creating your own universe. So can you give me a bit of advice of how to stay determined and how can you win people's hearts and uh, how can you break the like international barriers? And yeah. <clears throat> um, I think uh, it's funny, all these, all these answers kind of point to the same thing, but it's just being so like you when you make these things um, and knowing um, like where it's coming from, like, I probably said this story in another interview, but I put clothes out in like 2014 in December and I put swim trunks out and people were like, why the f are you putting swim trunks out in the winter? And I was like, what do you mean? It's hot, but I'm from LA, born and raised every Christmas except for two, the sun is out it's pretty warm. The freeways are empty. The Christmas is on TV with the snow and the, I don't know what that is. And that's okay. And because of that, the clothes that I make are so based on how saturated and colorful and sunny Los Angeles is that, you know, 20, 2011 and like 2015, 16, Golf Wing was like the only brand making male silhouettes and light pinks and, and purples and colors that's for usually women because of how I grew up in Los Angeles and when you do things like that that truly comes from here that's how you win people over or whatever because they're like wait what the f is that because they're intrigued because for some people it's foreign and foreign meaning like oh I'm not familiar with that it's the best thing ever. It's what, when Waka Flocka came out in 2010, everyone was like, what the fuck is this? And then him and Lex Luger fucked up rap music <laughs> for the next eight years because they opened the door for all this type of like subgenres of trap or whatever to fucking just come. Not, I didn't mean fuck up in a bad way. Like they like had everyone say, whoa. And then because of that, then you had what Young Chop and Chief Keef did, and then you have what Wheezy, and then what Young Thug, and then we're doing it, and Uzi, and all these things. So with that said, I, th I think like keeping your so you is important.
And I don't know how much music you listen to, but like, you know, if we went back to 2003, at least for like black music, it was still regional. Atlanta had, you know, Young Bloods and Young Dro and T.I. and Phil Mob and Ludacris. And that Atlanta sound was so Atlanta that they was talking about these old school cars with big rims and they always hung out in front of these busted ass houses with a car in the front with no engine in it. And I was like, yes, and crunk. And what Lil John was doing was like, oh, that's that. It didn't sound like what we was doing in Los Angeles. And it didn't sound like what they was doing in New York. It didn't sound like the, the, the crucial conflict twist of Kanye stuff that was coming out of Chicago. It didn't sound like the slow down screw music because of the promethacine that they were sipping in Texas. It was still regional. And now, because of Instagram, which I hope low key one day it just disappears, everything is, oh, I can't say the word homogenous. Everything is just the same now. Everyone's pulling from the same thing. So nothing is like special anymore. So you have the one up over everyone from being where you are and pulling from your like truth that we don't. So deep diver into that so it stands out from what everyone else in this room is doing, including me. Thank you. Hey, Tyler. Uh, my name's Tara. I'm from New Zealand. What up, Tyler? Uh, <laughs> what up? I'm Tyler. That's how I'm <laughs> Okay, first of all, it's pretty nostalgic for me because I grew up in a family um, that listened to you. So when I was like 12 years old, I was 21 now. That's fire. This is intense. Congrats. But my uh, question's a little bit more... Um, on the side of trials and tribulations. I was wondering, uh, is there some sort of hardship that you experienced in your life that changed the way you approached your perspectives and um, even your art and your craft? Can you like let us in on something that may have just like you up so much or maybe made you so happy that you just, all your perspectives changed? Yeah, it was two of them. Uh, I was walking down the street, walked in a restaurant and this guy stopped me and he said, oh, shit, you're the guy from Ridiculousness. And I was like, yeah. He gave me that, man, hell yeah, you're so funny on there, man. That's sick. Like, hope to see more of that. And he walked off. And I'm like, dude, I just, I just wrote a whole string section for like, and like, no one knows me. OK, cool. And then I deleted my Vine and deleted all my funny videos off my Instagram. And I said, I need to spend a year and a half not being funny. Like not letting that be the forefront. Still be goofy with my friends, jokes, ah, right? But like, <laughs> oh, f I, it's a, it's a disconnect. Be, oh, and then people walking up like, your girlfriend looks like my mom. And I'm like, bro, I said that when I was like 12, like, damn, they know that more than a lyric or this and that. And I love music too much, and I put that first in my real life. When I realized I wasn't seen as a musician or an artist or how I thought I was, I was like, ooh, mm-mm, okay, let's, yeah. let's hit the brakes real quick. So that fucked me up. And then 2016 European Cherry Bomb Tour, um, and I'm working on Flower Boy at this time, it was me... Travis, Travis is Taco. Um, me, Travis, and Jasper, we were in, were we in Rome or Italy? We were in Italy. We were in Italy and we had a, we had a show come out, do two songs. Third song starts and the music just stops. Now, I know how to wing so the music stops, I do it a cappella. I know how to crowd control, I'm not tripping. While that's happening, I know Travis, Jasper is figuring out what the fuck happened. They clap, I look back what's going on, they're like, oh, we're figuring it out, we need computer restart it, whatever. Restarted the computer. Started the next song. Same thing happens. It goes off, I'm like, fuck, so I gotta do this and that. They're telling me the computer was sitting in the sun it's fried. The backup computer broke. We're f So now we're going to have to play a few songs off of like iTunes, but they're figuring that out. So now I'm like, oh, f 
They're like, hey, we're going to need eight minutes. I'm like, F I can't tell eight minutes worth of jokes to a bunch of people. <laughs> no, seriously, to a bunch of people where f less than 40% understands English. It's a disconnect. So I'm just like, okay, I have two minutes of that in me before it gets weird. The sun is hot. Maybe 133 people here know me. It's 3,000. Do some jokes, whatever, da 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 da. I'm looking back, they're like, five more minutes. I'm like, F this is five minutes on a stage, thousands of people. It's 4 p.m., a thousand degrees is a lot. This kid had a uh, Marry Me Tyler sign. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, four more minutes. I'm like, Hey, y'all, this got a marry me sign. Y'all want me to marry this? Yeah! Like, I just bought myself three minutes. Whatever. They escort him in there. Da -da -da -da. I have them start clapping. All types of crazy They come up. I draw it out as long as I can. This man is on his knees, bro. <laughs> he has the sign. It's like, I'm looking back. They're like, oh, we don't know. It's broke. I'm like, oh, Snake puts a ring on my finger. Dude. <laughs> we get married. Everyone, everyone claps. It's that weird, awkward moment for him in the crowd to where, like, okay, it's over. So now I had to make a bit out of the security escorting him off. <clears throat> Computers don't work. Now we bid into, like, 14 minutes of the time. I have an early set, so it's probably, like, 10 minutes left. We play one song off the iPod from iTunes that we had to re-download, but the service is bad because, so that took, for, it was a mess. Do that, thanks. We go back and I'm just like, what the f Before this, this is a little long-winded. So before this, when we got to Europe, we got to our tour bus and we're like, what the f is this? It's spiders everywhere. It's mold. The TV in the back wasn't like, you know, a 2010 and up little thin screen in the back. It was like the TV had a booty on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just like, oh, damn, we ain't doing that bad. This is crazy, right? The tour manager we had at the time is like, yeah, no, we don't have hotels to shower at. Just everything's bad. And someone, someone, a bigger artist, uh, that we had a nice tour bus, they paid more on the side to the guys that do the tour buses to take our tour bus and they didn't even tell us. So everything's fucked. I feel gross. It's just terrible. Pharrell was out there. Um, at the same festival and um he was performing that night i was that was the only thing keeping me like yeah so watch the show we go to the studio after and i play them like a few songs from flower boy or whatever and this guy had me up against a wall for an hour like you need to do this more that you played me watch the reaction y'all know he's like super chill this was lit because I and I think he was mad at me because I wasn't seeing the now me so I had played I played glitter it was the rough and he was like yeah that's cool good chords it was like three other people in there it was a cactus that does a flea market and a Ben and like I think Shay from there was in there and I was like yeah that's cool I like the chord it's nice I was like okay cool I played the rough draft of Pothole, and it was cool, and Pharrell was like, yeah, that's cool, but like, good chords, but where's the And I'm like, all right, well, I'm working on this. Then I played Who That Boy, and it was, it was still rough, but I had the rough draft of the minute-long intro in there. When that came on, this mother looked at me like, <laughs> walked out when it was over. And it was like, no, that 
but it's hard. Someone was like, yeah, I like the glitter one more. And I was like, okay, cool. And Pharrell was like, mother what the is wrong with you? You hear that You see what the, you see what the they did? I'm like, uh, 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 no, I was, I was honestly looking at you. <laughs> he was like, go through all three of them again and watch the, watch the, what, mind you, dude, I'm like, I tower over this, this had me on the one, I'm like, <laughs> he's like, watch the mother reaction. I'm like, all right. I play glitter, watching the reactions, okay. Okay, she loves it, da, 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 da. other dude, whatever. Okay, I'm like, okay, I know who that's for. Play pothole, okay, I watch them. Hip hop, cool, chord, ah. I play who that boy, when I play it, he looks at me, he's like, watch their reaction. When that beat drop, you just watch a whole different thing happen. Play that, nigga spoke to me for a solid hour, standing up on the wall, just telling me this and that, this and that. We leave the studio, it's like, Maybe 6 a.m. I was there at that studio for like five, six hours. Me and my security, we leave at 6 a.m. We have to get out of the city at 9. I go there, shower, pack. We go to the train station. In the train station, I'm sitting in the middle of like, it's train, 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 train. This is where people wait to get on. And I'm sitting in the middle. It's a bunch of kids everywhere. And I'm just sitting there, I'm in like all black, just feeling terrible. And I had a moment where I said to myself, damn, that tour bus fiasco, that shit that happened on stage, those reactions, the dude that said I'm the guy from ridiculousness, all these things, I said, oh, that will never happen again. like that. Jasper has a photo of that moment. It's the weirdest thing. He has a photo. I'm just in the middle of a train station, just like, and then I went home. We had, we had two more shows, went home, finished Flower Boy, rest was history. So those two moments literally changed the trajectory of everything for me because I liked making music so much and thought like, oh, I'm the music guy, and no one gave a f It's not that they didn't like it. It's not that they didn't love it, hated it. I didn't care about that. It's that when they saw me, they didn't see that at all, and that f***ed me up. And then I was like, all right, watch this. And then I wrote See You Again. <laughs> that was great. That also answered one of my other questions because I was going to ask you, you referenced that on the Massa track, right? You mentioned that Pharrell said something to you in the Italy yeah. session that changed your perspective. So two birds and one stone, you answered another oh, one of my no, questions yeah. and her question. No, yeah, that song is, I was telling my, I was telling my friend Laj the other day, like that song is so straight to the point, honest. Like the, my boy Skateboard P gave me that speech in Italy session. Thankfully, by hour three of Detour Perspective, yeah. my thoughts changed so rapid. I turn a butterfly, then Flower Boy happened. Mm -hmm. All the bees buzz me, they love scream, they love me. That was the, f and then when Flower Boy happened, first time my private airline, accolades, like, mm -hmm. all of that shit just, whew. so yeah. When I was 20, 23, moved here, you, you really do kind of- No, I go loud. through it. My, when I turned 23, that's when, I, I went through my real puberty at 23. Like, for real, like, oh, 16, I got some hair on my Like, <laughs> peach fuzz, like, no. Like, I turned into a man at that 23, 24 age where my facial hair start coming in and I start bulking up and like, some of that funny shit wasn't cute. The, like, oh, you the ridiculous man. Like, I didn't, I wasn't who I saw myself like most kids do, like, I really, hit that and that's that's when it happened and it was the greatest thing ever i'm happy it happened at that age it was sick hopefully that answered your question probably too much information i could talk because <laughs> you answer more questions along the way i'm sure that all of us have and you saying that 
you're sick of being perceived as the guy you don't want to be perceived as. Yeah, um, or like the whole pie. Like I'm, dude, I'm funny and goofy and I find humor in everything, but I don't want that to be the hundred percent of my plate. Like it's chicken and mashed potatoes and peas and here. I just don't want to be seen as peas. Like, yeah, I'm funny, but I'm also stupid talented and like this and that, but I'm goofy and I could write and perform better than everyone. That's just like in my head, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. Next question, the back over there. Hi, Jane Tyler. What up, Cape Town? My, <laughs> my name is Lesejo. What up, Tyler? Cool, cool. So my question is, what would you say your most challenging project, whether it be music, um, fashion, what was the most challenging project that you had to work on? La Fleur and Flower Boy. Yeah. Do you want to walk us through the process of like um, the creativity? Like, you don't have to walk us through the whole thing. What was the most challenging aspects of it? For La Fleur, I come from, for, for making like a perfume and a $400 sweater and like $200 loafers and like things like, like that world, um, not pigeonholed, but when you're looked at as just like the t-shirt hoodie sneaker guy and you go into this new world, the people who love and support you might not have the same lens or experiences or live obviously in the same type of world that you live in so it was weird because a lot of that got met by negativity and i'm like no y'all like this is a different world but no we know how dare you did it and i'm like no like you can't pigeonhole me based on the side of me that you like like, oh, you like t-shirt Tyler. I feel you, but in my regular life, this is actually the shit that I do. And I wanted to put my version of that out. I love perfume, I love trunks. I have a true, if some if people have gambling problems, I cannot stop buying trunks. It's a problem, you know what I mean? So then I'm like, man, I wanna make a trunk. Those things aren't cheap. These are handmade in France. Hermes and Louis own all the factories. You know how hard it is to get these made? So when I make a trunk and it's sold for 10 grand and kids are like, how dare he? He lost himself. I'm like, bro, Louis, are, they're $25,000. They're some, dude, Louis perfume is $296. It's a Tom Ford one out right now that's $380. They're selling a big bottle for $900. And a kid is like, he's selling a small bottle for a hundred. And I'm offended because I'm like, kid, before you attack me, look at the world that it's in. No, they don't look up other perfume. They don't look up the other stuff because they're just like only t-shirts. And I'm like, the whole thing is for me to help you open your scope and see it's a whole different world. This sweater is light. So it's bad quality. I'm like, kid, you think because a sweater is heavy, it's better quality? Like, you're <sighs> kids. Like, so I, that, <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot of things that they don't know. And I'm like, no, like, open it up. But because of the world we live in now, everything's reactive. Everyone's like, why is this like this? Instead of, wait, why is this like this? So that was like a, that was challenging for that side, not making this stuff, like figuring that stuff out was like fun because it was new for me. It was like, well, yeah, I always buy this stuff, but oh, that's how it's made. That's this and that. So that was fun. But being looked at as a certain way to some people, when you switch that in any type of way, some people are like, no, what, what is this? Who are you? You lost yourself. The money's gotten in your head. And it's like, dude, you sound crazy. And that's more of a reflection on them for not going over there and uh, informing themselves about that. And then for Flower Boy, it was like, okay, don't be the crazy funny. Like, 
every beat, every part don't have to have a switch up where you don't have to say something edgy. Like, shut the fuck up and just say it nice. Don't yell on the record like the first four fucking albums. So that was like challenging because it's the comfort level of what you're used to doing, like your knee jerk reaction and me saying, wait, no. Actually, someone else should sing that. Or let me say this like this, like, dude, Flower Boy writing in verses. I will write the same verse in four different ways because I was going to like approach it differently because I was like, I will usually say it like this. But I was like, OK, that's one part. But let me say it. Let me say it like this when I get it. it ah, that might not work. Let me say it with the toe, with the toe. And like and because of that, I learned new ways to rap and flow and it helped out. But not doing my normal comfort thing was like, we got to break out of it even more. And it worked out. So no, sometimes so getting out your comfort level is the greatest thing ever. And we, we, it's so easy to fall right back into it. It's easy to relapse right back in it. No, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Kia ora. I'm Em. I'm from Auckland. What up, Tyler? Oh, wow. Um, so first of all, um, since this trip, I've been having a lot of moments to myself. Um, sort of away from everybody and just really sitting in um, my life and, and thinking like, wow, this is really incredible to be in another country and get to experience everything and with all these beautiful people. Yeah. Um, and I had a moment of realization where I was like, all of these people are insanely talented. Like my group that I worked with, most beautiful people. Um, and I realized that I'm only here because of everybody else and it's it's really propelled me forward. Um, and now I'm actually gonna go out and work on my music and put my out and like, it's been a yeah. big thing. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Thank you. So big props to you for being here and allowing us to experience this and thank you Converse as well. Um, my question for you is, did you have any moments like in your career where you sort of had to step out of yourself and go, wow, this is this is amazing. This is my life. Um, this is incredible. I do that every day, every day, every every. My friends will tell you that around because I don't even want to look at my friends that's here to signal them. They will tell you every day around eight forty-seven. I probably say. Man, they're like, what? I'm like, this is awesome. They're like, what? Guess what we have to do? Guess our only responsibility for the rest of the night. And Jasper, what do I usually say? Go to sleep. Oh. <laughs> Just lay. And you know what's the best? You wake up and I could get a vanilla oat chai latte. <laughs> or like... Or I could get pancakes, bro. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Bro, I'm going bat watching tonight. You know how awesome that is? I don't know what the hell that is. Come on, bro. It's an Aussie thing. At like 8, 9 p.m., the bats like all oh, migrate over the, the sky. Life is so tight <laughs> like do you understand like bro i'd be so excited over like goop we before i came down we went to mcdonald's we went to mcdonald's i i eat mcdonald's in europe and australia it's different we went there last mcdonald's we went to two days ago the lady was like chai tea latte that's my that's my australian <laughs> accent she's like <laughs> Chai tea latte, and a, and, a, and a lady grabbed it. And I was like, what the f And she jumped. She was like, and I was like, no, sorry. I just, I didn't know these had chai tea latte, right? And she was like, oh yeah, it's like the best chai tea latte uh, in the city, surprisingly, because it's McDonald's. I'm like, oh my God, can they add vanilla in it? She said, yes. I said, <laughs> I can't wait. So when we went today, I was like so excited to try it, but also 
to get them chicken nuggets. And listen, for some reason, I don't know why, but the chicken nuggets today, I look, my eyes are about, I'm about to cry. They were so good. I told 18 people upstairs, hey, you need to try these chicken nuggets. Like, I am so, I, I truly enjoy the small thing. And I'll be looking back like, bro, bro, I've been friends with Jasper for 15 years. 15, 15, that's long. I'm 30, like, that's a long time to be like, all right, I'll fuck with you, bro. Like, every year. <laughs> and bro, when we be on the jet, jet, me, it just be me and Jay, me and Jasper on a plane, just me and him, knowing where we came from, I'd be like, what? We are from Hawthorne, bro. It's me, it's Jasper, and it's my bike. I bring my BMX on the plane. Just me and him. Like, I'd be like, we, this is real. Every time, every time. This isn't like we did it, and y'all don't see me like, I don't post the photos on the jet getting on it. And like, good. like. <laughs> I don't do that because I really be sitting in that motherfucker like, from rap music, from lyrics, from wonky beats. Are you, man? We ain't gotta work. What? We be jet skiing. I be like, <laughs> don't even know how to swim where we from, bro. We touching water. <laughs> That's why when I make call me if you get lost, and you got a bunch of little privileged kids on a message board, like, oh, the money got to them. I'm like, you don't know where I'm from. Like, y'all don't know. I don't talk about, like, y'all don't know where I grew up, how my family, like, y'all don't know that. Y'all know 17 and up Tyler. Mm -hmm. So when y'all see me like, Luna Park, <laughs> I mean that. Cause I'm like, I get to wake up and get on a roller coaster? Bro, I have the greatest life ever. I'm. Blessed, blessed. That's that blessed track on that last album I put out. I meant every good skin glowing. We healthy, healthy, bro. I have the lungs of a plastic cup. I, my asthma is terrible, but the fact that I could move and walk and do all, that, bro, love it. So yes, every day that moment you have, every day. I can't wait to get to that point. You, you there, you there. Even, even, even when we was taking the bus to Fairfax or the skate park or whatever, damn, this is awesome, this pizza is delicious, little $2 pizza, damn, this is great. Grateful, and you know, some people are different, but that was always here. Mm -hmm. So don't lose that, don't lose that. Even if you become a billionaire, if that's here, you always have it, it's beautiful. Yes. Tyler, <clears throat> sweet, sweet and sour sauce or with the nuggets? I, do, yes. I've, for some reason, the last two months, because we've been in Europe, to like, we've been in, we did the whole Europe run and we've been here, sweet and sour sauce has been going crazy. It's, I don't know what, I just want to just shove it in my ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. We've got time for one more question. I'm so, hey, so sorry to be I have the mic. <laughs> testing, um, testing, I have the mic. Oh, Jay's I have a question. Hey. It's a good question. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jasper. Hi, Jasper. Hi, I'm right. Tyler. If you was a hamster, what would you name yourself? What, what'd you say? If you was a hamster, what would you name yourself? Wet battery. I have one more thing to say. Can you fill that bag up? Right now! All right, this is the last one. You forgot something. Uh, we were at the train station. You couldn't find a croissant with uh, strawberry jelly, and you was really depressed about that. That's what took... I'm, I'm mad I left it out. That's what took me over the fucking edge. <laughs> That's what took me over the fucking edge, bro. So I like sweets, bro. Like cookies, donuts, cupcakes, chai tea latte. Like, that's my vice, by the way. Like, it ain't heroin. It ain't alcohol. Like... I'm not at strip club, I love sugar, bro. Like, it's a problem, right? So, I'm sitting there and thing, for, for reals in my head, like, play that one. 
the kid on his knees marrying me is in this head. The dude's like ridiculous. Like it's all here. The spider that was on me on the tour bus is like, so I'm sitting there thinking and the tour manager dude, I'm like, yo, you need anything? And I'm like, bro, literally just a croissant with strawberry jam. Cause we didn't eat after the stu studio for like five hours, ran, shower, came, we didn't eat. I'm like, just please that. That's all I need. That would have br like, that would have brought me so much joy. Bro, eight minutes go by, bro. This walk up. And I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm like, did you he's like, oh, oh, no, they sorry. They, that's my UK accent. <laughs> sorry. They didn't have anything. And I'm like, that's what took me off. But I sat there like, oh, this is never gonna happen again. That's what took me over the edge, my <laughs> croissant. <laughs> One more question. So look, just some advice. If a ever ask you, hey, ma'am, I know you don't know me, but I need a croissant. Maybe just get the man a croissant, dude. That's it. Yeah, By I like it. The thick laces are so much. Oh, so bro, much I love. I love. No, 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 no. So sick though. I'm gonna need some of those. No, we um, we uh, I love, I love thick laces. Like, I'm, I'm obsessed with them. So yeah. Oh, that's I'm a change. And that's how quick covers are. Let's go. That's how quick covers are. Fire. Well. She was. Hi, my name is Gretch. I'm from Mexico City. Hello, Gretch Tyler. What up? I love you, man. <laughs> Will you marry me? That was my question. <laughs> Fire. Okay. Fire. I'm the, um, have you ever shown your music to someone and they told you that you better make another type of music because it was so, like, different? Um, <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I wouldn't show my mom my music because I was aware that, like, this isn't for her. So I was like, I don't even want to hear her. And, you know, I'm like 14, 15, but I'm like, I don't want to hear her say yeah or no or this and that because I'm like, oh, this is so out of reach for her comprehension. Um, and I don't want the, I didn't want the, oh, I love you. Yeah, it's good. Keep going. Like, I want it. A honest truth but that had context to it yeah. um, and that's really important like even to this day if I make a certain song it's certain people I don't show the rough draft to because it's like oh your ear caters to this type of music but if I make something that vain and I play it for them and they like eh, that's cool I'm like oh f you're like the uh, you're the Brazilian samba head and you don't like my version of it, oh, f that must mean, you know, if you had a friend who loved avocado and you grew your own avocado and they was like, this avocado ain't it, dog, you're going to be like, damn, this is avocado god. I need to. <laughs> But if you make an avocado and you give it to a who only wants a croissant and he's like, I don't like this avocado, you can't be sitting there like, damn, this avocado ain't good enough because they don't have the reference point of like really knowing a good, a bad, a ripe, a too early, a soggy, the soil was bad, the water was bad, avocado. So you kind of got to like, you know, tread lightly with it. Same with the LaFleur stuff. His kids who don't, I've been wearing my mom's perfume since I was a kid. So I like, I love a cardigan. I love a good pair of slacks. So when I put that stuff out, is kids who's like, I don't dress like that. So f this shit. I don't wear sweats. So if my friend is like, yo, I made these sweats, like, you want to wear them? And I'm like, bro, I don't wear sweats. So I can't even say that these are good or bad because I don't f know. I'm, <laughs> I'm in boxers, bro. <laughs> like, so yeah, so be super aware of that stuff. Like, take those super lightly and be aware of the ears that. You know. Okay, thank you so much. Hell yeah.
Yes, dude. Woo! Well, that actually brings us to the end of this question. You're so good at this. <laughs> like, it's like no, it's like a science to it. Cause I don't know if the mic got passed, but if it did and you saw it, you said, "Oh, two seconds before we." And you say, woo, and that, like literally on some psych like that, it, it's like good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was crazy. Thank you. Tyler, w w would you be down to hang out with us for a little bit after this and suss out our, our work? Well, and, okay. And do All the right. whole. See, that's when, okay, then it's a point where you're too good. <laughs> Cause like I'm a be around, and she knew that, but she did professionally for the sake of film, like want the good closer. So then, if it's an edit, when we cut to me walking around, <laughs> it's a it's a bridge into that footage. Like you're really good. That was crazy, like kind of sketchy. What? Right, what'd you say? She's the one. She's She's the one. Yes. Yes. That was like a f movie. <laughs> like, f yeah, like that. <laughs> that was so tight. Oh, well, it's not about me. Round of applause for Tyler, the creator. I'm <laughs> Fine.